Aquarius Houston over. Okay, uh, this is your friendly do-it-yourself, Capcom, with a uh, suggested procedure on the lithium hydroxide situation. Uh, you're looking good. We read 1.8 millimeters, uh, and you do have uh, sufficient uh, limb poop to uh, last you the rest of the flight. However, uh, being on the conservative side, uh, we would like to uh, use one more set of uh, command module canisters uh, to guard against some uh, possible uh, problem with the uh, lead primary canister. And I have a uh, simplified procedure Listening, uh, Ecom told me that he'd like another uh, battery uh, charging. Yeah. Houston, go. Uh, you wanted to start 
Uh, it's not time critical, Fred, but uh, if you have the people awake now, uh, you might go ahead and do it. Uh, incidentally, uh, I, you probably know this, but uh, uh, the next several hours are going to be pretty quiet from our point of view. We're working on the entry procedures and uh, should be ready to read them up to you in about eight hours. And uh, between now and then, there's not an awful lot going to be going on. Uh, so you guys could be catching up on your sleep schedule. Over. And we would like another readout on the uh, amps and bolts. that Fred uh, thank you very much 38.9 and 1.9 and uh, uh, Ecom is, uh, is simply making a, uh, a smooth a plot as he can uh, to verify the amount of amps we're putting back in the battery that's why he wants it at uh, half hour intervals uh, if that schedule begins to interfere seriously with your uh, rest cycle or so uh, give us a call over
Hey, okay, uh, Fred. Uh, we suspected that you'd uh, gotten at least one on. We've noticed a, uh, a partial pressure drop from uh, 1.8 to 0 0.8, which is uh, real good. Okay, uh, we might run that by the CCB and uh, see if they approve our uh, in house pod. Roger that. Aquarius, Houston. I go ahead, Joe. Roger, we're convening the CPCB on that change, uh, Fred, but uh, Flight has given you an interim go ahead. Over. Houston, uh, your convenience, we'd like another uh, Bolts and Amps readout. Okay. How do you read, Joe? Pretty good, Fred. Okay, a Bolt 39.0, Amps 1.7. 39.0, 1.7, thank you. Houston, go ahead. You're pretty weak. Uh, I did call you, Joe. Say again? I did call. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, incidentally, Fred, uh, if uh, switching Omnis uh, every couple of minutes bugs you, you can skip it for now. We can always wait till you come around. Roger that. Except I'm sitting by.
Jack, the plot shows you about 130,000 miles out, which is about, gee, 10,000 closer than you were when I came on a couple hours ago. And uh, let me check with Fido for your uh, ready to close it. Jack, over. Go ahead. Uh, your smiling Fido says you're making 5,040 in a 5,000 mile zone. Jack, hate to keep bugging you, but uh, we would like a uh, another uh, volts and amps reading. Okay, we'll get it for you. Good show. Six minutes, we're on the lapse time. Rather quiet at the present time, very little communications with the spacecraft. Which now is 126,029 nautical miles out from Earth. Approach velocity, 5,076 feet per second. Electrical power usage hovering around 12, 13 amps. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the lunar module cabin, now one-tenth of a millimeter of mercury. The addition of the uh, two command module lithium hydroxide scrubber canisters to the uh, homemade device rigged up yesterday by the crew of Apollo 13 has uh, reduced this quantity of carbon dioxide from uh, slightly over one millimeter back down to one-tenth. Apollo 13 uh, total weight standing at 87,740 pounds. Here goes a call, I believe, to the spacecraft.
uh, accidental nudge of the keying switch at the spacecraft communicator's console, causing the familiar beep-beep sound. And some other spacecraft onboard readings are showing now uh, 33.17 pounds of oxygen in the descent stage, 2.25 pounds uh, in ascent tank 1, 2.67 pounds ascent tank 2. Water quantities, descent 51.9 pounds, ascent tank 1, 42.1. Ascent tank to 42.1 pounds. Cabin pressure 4.98 pounds per square inch. Showing a temperature of 51 degrees, which is at the the measurement is taking taken at the outlet and does not represent the free air temperature in the cabin, which is probably up around 70. As mentioned earlier, Apollo 13 gross weight on both vehicles is now 87,740 pounds. Of this weight, 58,728 pounds are rocket propellant, about 29 tons. This computes out to 67% of the total vehicle weight and propellants. Apollo 13 uh, is the fifth time that a manned spacecraft has made the return from the moon. Apollo 8, back in December of 68, was a somewhat conservative approach using the command and service module only, and uh, going into lunar orbit, having a, quite a large margin of propellant available to go into lunar orbit and to make the trans-Earth injection out of lunar orbit back toward Earth. Apollo 10, uh, the all-up spacecraft, went into lunar orbit, did everything but the actual landing, including the descent orbit down to about eight miles above the moon, but stopped short of making the descent. Here again, there were adequate margins of propellant. And with Apollo 11, the landing was made, and Apollo 12 is essentially a repeat as far as the amount of propellants and the spacecraft performance were concerned. At any rate, all of these had smaller amounts or smaller quantities of propellant available than Apollo 13 does at the present time. The uh, service propulsion system propellant on Apollo 13 stands untapped at 40,796 pounds. This was for a planned total delta V, or velocity change of some 6,975 feet per second with various vehicle combinations, not just command service module alone, but in some cases such as uh, lunar orbit insertion and DOI where you had the total limb and command module combination, and others, uh, the trans-Earth injection burn where only the command and service module uh, would use up some 3,147 feet per second. There are 11,093 pounds of descent propulsion uh, propellant remaining. However, not all of this is available uh, since the su uh, supercritical helium burst disk relief valve blew during the night. There's about 800 feet per second blowdown or ullage volume in the descent propulsion tanks. So not all of this 11,000 pounds are available. In the untapped ascent propellant tanks, we have 5,242 pounds loaded. Service module 
reaction control system, 1,342 pounds are still relatively untapped except for the small attitude usage uh, that was uh, <clears throat> made during the translunar coast prior to the time that the fuel cells gave up the ghost. In the command module reaction control system, this is still a sealed dual ring system in the command module for attitude control during entry, there are 245 pounds of propellant available there. When uh, the service module and lunar module are jettisoned prior to entry, approximately 29 tons of what is jettisoned to enter the atmosphere and burn up will be propellant. Spaceflight Meteorology Group of the Weather Bureau said this morning that weather conditions would be acceptable for Apollo 13's landing in the Pacific Ocean Friday, April 17, in the planned recovery area, which is centered about 560 miles southeast of Samoa. Skies will be partly cloudy with widely scattered showers. Easterly winds at 15 knots and seas about 4 feet are expected with 75 degree temperature. Helen, a small, weak tropical storm, is predicted to be about 500 miles west of the recovery area and should not affect the landing or recovery of Apollo 13. Conversation underway with Apollo 13. Let's join in. Uh, gee whiz, Jack. Uh, I... When did it happen? Over. Uh, just now. I just got to that. Oh, okay. We had a handover, but that was about a half an hour ago, and I uh, I didn't call you on it. Uh, let me check with Inco and uh, see if he thinks everything's okay. Your comm sounds uh, just as good as it's ever been. Yeah, I'm in real good shape. at the present time of 23.6 with a flight path angle of minus 6.25 degrees. Uh, that's without a mid-course. Uh, uh, he's kind of uh, tossing around the idea of, uh, of doing a, uh, a mid-course uh, 7 maneuver at uh, 5 hours before entry. Uh, if we do it, it looks like it won't be more than 2 feet per second. <laughs> he 
copies that. Dave is here. He says he kept him so busy he hasn't had time to work on his stereo all week. vessel Iwo Jima is steaming toward the aiming point in the South Central Pacific and is estimated arrival time at the aiming point is at uh, 9 a.m. Central Time on the 17th. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide still holding at one-tenth of a millimeter of mercury. in the lunar module cabin. Cabin pressure, 4.98 pounds, holding steady. At 115 hours, 16 minutes, 115 hours, 17 minutes, ground elapsed time, and standing by, this is Apollo Control.
Jim. Uh, good morning. And I uh, understand you're relieved to watch, and uh, uh, the rest was kind of blurry. Did you have any questions? No questions, Joe. Just wanted to establish the communication. Okay, that was uh, that was loud and clear. That one there. We uh, we don't have a heck of a lot going on, as you know. Uh, we're working out the entry procedures. I've got preliminary copies, but we're not ready to uh, pass it up to you. Uh, looks like you're about 125,000 miles out. Uh, start to start to really pick up speed. And uh, the Astros won last night, and that's about all I got. Okay. Aquarius Houston over. Okay, uh, uh, Jim, it's about time uh, at your convenience for another Volts and Amps reading on the uh, command module. For your information, uh, we put six amp hours back in that battery already, and we got about 14 to go. It's looking real good. And I also just got the word that the, uh, the entry weather tomorrow is looking better all the time. It really looks great. That's good, but I want to go by Didn't copy that, Jim, sorry. Houston, go ahead. Roger, 39.2 on the boat, 1.4 on the end. 39.2 and 1.4, thank you. Just for your information, uh, in case uh, it happened when you were off watch, the uh, the uh, uh, master caution circuit breaker is uh, is uh, still pulled, and uh, we're uh, we're seeing the uh, the malfunction uh, indication on the uh, on the descent battery now, but uh, all the parameters still look just as good as ever, and that's just for information. recommend you ignore it. and amps time again at your convenience. Okay. you 
Houston. Okay, go ahead. Okay, copy 39.3 and uh, 1.25. Uh, Jim, did uh, Jack tell you what your trajectory looks like? Over. Haven't got up to uh, speed on it. How about to get right now? Okay, uh, we're looking at a vacuum perigee right now of 23.6. Flight path angle of minus 6.25. And uh, if we uh, decide we want to trim that up, uh, we're looking at a mid-course of about two feet per second. Uh, your consumables, uh, of course, are getting better all the time. We've got 163 hours of water, 230 hours of uh, oxygen, and 172 hours worth of electrical power. Over. That sounds good. This is Apollo Control, 116 hours, 35 minutes, ground elapsed time. Spacecraft position now 120,598 nautical miles out from Earth. Approach velocity 5,227 feet per second. Countdown clocks now showing uh, 26 hours, 4 minutes to entry interface or 400,000 feet above the surface of the Earth. Time to ignition for mid-course correction burn number seven. Now tentatively 21 hours, four minutes. This is entry interface minus five hours. Cabin pressure still holding at 4.78 in the lunar module. Average uh, voltage our amperage uh, usage still hovering around 12, 13, 14 amps in the lunar module. Vehicle weight still 87,740 pounds. At 116 hours, 37 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, an advisory to newsmen in the Houston News Center. Donald K. Deke Slayton, Flight Crew Operations Director at Manned Spacecraft Center, is now en route to the main auditorium for the 10 o'clock briefing. Should arrive there within about five minutes. This is Apollo Control. Houston, over. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, Jim, uh, we'd like to uh, get another check uh, from you on the uh, propellant tank temperatures, uh, as we did yesterday, and uh, the procedure is to, on panel 16, circuit breaker, propellant display slash engine override logic to close. Uh, then go to your display and read the tank one and tank two uh, temperatures uh, for us, and then uh, open the circuit breaker again. Over. Okay, I'm uh, closing down the uh, display and give over my money. Roger.
That's all I got. Okay, I'll go over to get them up. He's got one now, and the field is uh, about 64, and uh, oxidizer is 65, and I'll go with defense, too. Okay, thank you very That's much. Defense, too. Okay, you got defense, too, now, right? Of uh, 67 and 66. Hey, Raj, we copy that. And uh, once again, uh, we'd like that uh, bolts and amps check in the command module. Okay, I'm going to go up there and get it, uh, Jack, to uh, better at least for you up here a little bit. Okay, real good. It occurs at 16%, and it's no problem because we intend to run the tank dry just for drill. Uh, to reset the, uh, the light uh, on panel 2, uh, just set the O2 H2O quantity monitor to the caution warning reset position, and the light will go away. Over. Okay, we're going to get a uh, H2O uh, warning light here shortly, and uh, I'll reset it. Okay, good deal. This is Apollo Control, 117 hours, 30 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 13, now 117,810 nautical miles out from Earth. Approach velocity, 5,308 feet per second. Entry flight path angle still holding at minus 6.24 degrees. Countdown clocks, entry 25 hours and 9 minutes from now, ignition on the proposed uh, mid-course correction burn, uh, number 7, now 20 hours and 9 minutes away, lunar module cabin temperature hovering around 4.74, uh, 4.78 pounds per square inch. Flight plan uh, now showing rest period for the command module pilot, which began at 116 hours, about an hour and a half ago. At uh, 3 p.m. in the main auditorium at uh, Manned Spacecraft Center, Neil Armstrong, commander of Apollo 11, will hold a press conference. Uh, to discuss the various aspects of Apollo 13. And at 117 hours, 32 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Houston, go ahead. Okay, Joe, we just got the water going. Okay, roger that. Aquarius 
Houston, over. Okay, Jim, uh, the uh, experts would like another volt and amp reading. Okay, that's a Okay, no much. This is Apollo Control, 117 hours, 51 minutes, ground elapsed time. Distance from Earth, 116,748 nautical miles. Aquarius, Houston, go. Joe, you might pass to our friends in two systems at the Buddha Boot, the great football. I guess you need them up there, too. Uh, is, uh, is anybody sleeping in the command module right now, Jim? I'm negative, Joe. I think you're told him there. I've got uh, such guys over here that the last few days have been sleeping. Roger. Okay, Jim, you're going to have to stay with us. Okay, Jim, you're going to eliminate the chill-down procedure for the re-entry. We figured we were in that mode now. Velocity now 5,342 feet per second. Henry H. Wilson, Jr., president of the Chicago Board of Trade, has forwarded the following message to the Mission Control Center. The Chicago Board of Trade will suspend trading at 11 a.m. today for a moment of tribute to the courage and gallantry of America's astronauts and a prayer for their safe return to Earth. Who's doing that, Terry? At uh, 117 hours, 53 minutes, ground elapsed time, and standing by, this is Apollo Control. This is Earth, over. Go ahead, Earth. Where is here? Uh, Roger, uh, Earth is here also. And, uh, Jim, it's time for another one of those uh, volt amp checks. Uh, for your information, we've got uh, that battery back up to 30 amp hours now, over. Hey, that sounds great, though. Check for the second. Go ahead. You know, I 
Go ahead. Houston, uh, have you guys put on any extra clothes to try and uh, ward off the uh, nip of Jack Frost? Over. Uh, well, the winter boots and uh, two pair of underwear, and uh, everyone's well is falling to a sleep suit thing. Yeah. Uh, we're really reluctant to break out the suit. Yeah, that's that's understandable. Uh, you can you can always use them if you have to. Uh, I guess it's uh, pretty hard to get. Uh, extra coveralls on him. Well, Joe, I don't think we have any extra uh, in-play carpet support, but we're going to check right now. Well, stand by. closer we get to entry, the uh, the more we get on the checklist, and by the time we're about at EI minus 45, we're, uh, we're on the checklist all the way. Okay. And uh, this is a reminder, don't forget our stowage problem. We, uh, we still have to do uh, quite a bit of stowage so the probe and probe and we'll have them, uh, et cetera. Roger that. We've got a team working on that. Uh, and incidentally, one of the uh, information items that they want to know is uh, which lithium hydroxide containers in the command module are empty. They just want to know that for weight and balance. And 
There's no rush about it. Houston. Go ahead. Okay, we'd like another uh, volt amp reading, Jim. Okay, stand by, Jim. Gotcha. Timeline to discuss with you in one hour. 